हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू यू ऑल टूडेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज एंथेलमेंटिक्स इन दिस टॉपिक आई विल डिस्कस इंट्रोडक्शन क्लासिफिकेशन एंड मोड ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ एंथेलमेंटिक्स सो एंथेलमेंटिक्स आर आल्सो नोन एज एंटी हेलमेंटिक्स दीज आर अ ग्रुप ऑफ एंटी पैरासिटिक ड्रग्स that kills parasitic worms especially helminths and other internal parasites and expel them from the body by killing them helminths are worm like parasites that survive by feeding on a living host and completely depend on the host for nourishment and protection and do not cause any significant damage to the host you can observe different kinds of helminths in the following diagram as it is clear that enthelmintics are toxic in nature so selective toxicity becomes an important parameter so enthelmintics must be selectively toxic to the parasite this is usually achieved either by inhibiting metabolic processes that are vital to the parasite but not vital to or absent in the host or by controlling the pharmacokinetic properties of the compound usually those pharmacokinetic properties are controlled that cause the parasite to be exposed to higher concentrations of of the enthelmintics than are the host cells Classification of enthelmintics includes compounds belonging to the category such as phenols and derivatives, piprazine and related compounds, antimalarial compounds, various heterocyclic compounds, and natural products. So the first category is of piprazines. Drugs belonging to this category are piprazine and diethyl carbamazine citrate. second category includes benzimidazole derivatives such as thiabendazole alvendazole and mevendazole in the third category heterocyclic compounds main drug candidates are pyrazoquintel and oxamaniquine Next drug candidate ivermectin is produced by the filamentous bacterium Streptomyces evermetallis that is why it belongs to the category natural products Next drug candidate pyrantel pamoate is a vinyl pyrimidine derivative Last category is of amide and it contains niclosamide as a major drug candidate next i am going to discuss mode of action of enthelmintics so first one is mode of action of piprazine and derivatives piprazine acts as a gaba agonist so it blocks the response of ascaris muscle to acetylcholine causing chloride channel opening neural hyperpolarization and flaccid paralysis of susceptible parasites flaccid paralysis causes reduced muscle tone in the worm so the affected worms are then expelled from the intestinal wall by normal enteric movements next one is mode of action of thiabendazole Mode of action of thiabendazole has not been fully understood but it is believed that it inhibits fumarate reductase which is a helminth specific mitochondrial enzyme and because of this specific enzyme inhibition it causes inhibition of citric acid cycle mitochondrial respiration and production of ATP which ultimately leads to the death of parasite It is also believed that thiabendazole and mevendazole 
interface with the microtubule assembly of the nematode's cell division because of their high affinity for tubulin. This leads to inhibition of tubulin polymerization and the formation of microtubules with impaired cell division. Tubulin is the precursor protein for the biosynthesis of microtubule. Next is mode of action of pyrenteral pamoate. This pyrimidine pamoate is a depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agent that is why it causes spastic paralysis in the susceptible helminths. Because of this paralysis, worm lose its grip on the intestinal wall and passed out of the system. Now at last, mode of action of oxamaniquine. Oxamaniquine has been shown to produce irreversible inhibition of the nucleic acid metabolism of the parasites. It inhibits DNA, RNA and protein synthesis in cystosomes. This causes inhibition of DNA replication and transcription. Following are the references of this topic. Thank you.